Hello agents and welcome to another daily episode of Target Loot Today, your daily farming guide for Thursday, February 11th. In this series, we cover a lot. We got the Target Loot map, Dark Zone exclusives, highlights from the weekly vendors, and build and farming suggestions as well. This is Shadow Gaming, and if you're new to the channel and enjoy this video, consider pressing the thumbs up and subscribe buttons below, and if not, a thumbs down. And always remember to hit the bell notification icon to all so you never miss a daily morning video, and comment below if you have any questions or feedback whatsoever, I always try to respond within 12 to 24 hours. Otherwise, let's get this video started, agents. Alright agents, starting off with the dark zones and of course vendor reset highlights which are always in the big bottom left overlay right there. So I highly recommend getting the orbit pistol and the DZ south vendor for 152 DZ resources and also the carnage with perfect sadist in the DZ east area. Also I'd recommend the force multiplier at the clan and the white house vendor has a zero house chest piece of perfect unbreakable. Otherwise at DZ west we got knee pads over here which is really great because there's something you can farm for that's a dark zone exclusive that is really good. And that of course is the Emperor's Guard knee pads that come with 1% armor regen, perfect for your foundry bulwark build for sure. You can also farm for the Sawyer's knee pads and of course the Ninja Bike Messenger knee pads, those are the two exotics in this game and they're both completely different. For the Ninja Bike Messenger knee pads you're going to be doing a vault or cover to cover to get 25% bonus armor and of course instantly reload your weapon and for Sawyer's the opposite, you're going to sit still and every second is going to give you 1% weapon damage and the second you even flinch you start losing it by one percent and then of course lastly you can farm for the fox's pair knee pads with eight percent damage targets out of cover which is multiplicative damage the best type of damage in this game and i recommend every agent have a pair of these but of course i'd recommend farming overlord over knee pads and definitely stay out of the dark zone if it's not a dark zone exclusive in my opinion as for DZ South and DZ East, there are no Dark Zone exclusives. You know, for DZ South, you got Hunter's Fury, which I always give you guys my favorite Hunter's Fury build, which will be in the top title card right now and bottom overlay. And that, of course, is four pieces of Hunter's Fury, the Death Grip Gloves, and the Memento Backpack. And you're going to mix that with the Dark Winter as your primary and the Scorpio Shotgun as your secondary. And I always run the Orbit Pistol as my third, you know, so it really, really works out with that perfect finisher and Dark Winter as well. And then of course as an alternative, you could just run a Sokolo chest with Intimidate or my favorite Obliterate, the Memento Backpack, and four pieces of Hunter's Fury, but you're still going to run around the Dark Winter, the Scorpio, and the Orbit if you have it. And then lastly in DZ East, we got Petrov, so of course you can farm the Contractor's Gloves, they come with 8% damage to armor, but I highly recommend getting them from Cassie if she's still available, but I don't think that she is unfortunately, she had some god rolled paired ones yesterday, and I hope you guys got them. Otherwise, I'd recommend farming, you know, Gloves Target Loot maybe today if it's available, otherwise, you know, wait until Petrov comes out of the Dark Zone, or you could farm it if you want the Contractor's Gloves in the DZ, it's up to you, otherwise let's move on to the North side now. Alright agents, Northside Target Loot Highlights, starting off with the Invade missions this week, we got Federal Emergency Bunker, and then of course Bank HQ, Potomac Event Center, and the Strongholds is Manning National Zoo, and then Tidal Basin. For the target of Lou, we're going to start off with Aces and Eights at Camp White Oak. Highly recommend using three pieces of Aces and Eights, and then you mix two pieces of Aral the Holding, which you can get over here at Coney Island Ballpark today, one being a backpack with Vigilance or Composure, and the Chain Killer chest piece of Perfect Headhunter. I always run that with the Mantis as my primary, and Ekim's Long Stick with Perfect Ranger as my secondary or the White Death. It's a great headshot damage build, and you know, it does 20 million a headshot. And of course, speaking of headshot builds, are all the holding at Coney Island Ballpark. Like I said, you should go for weapon damage, weapon handling, and headshot damage. You don't really have to get crit hit chance or crit hit damage. Just always make sure your headshot damage builds are 200% headshot damage or above, and then you're going to be knocking everything out with the chain killer chest piece and all that headshot damage. Next up, we got Mass over here at Coney Island Amusement Park. So you got the two exotics, Coyote's Mask. Of course, that's for DPS builds, especially for, you know, a four-man group. You know, only one person has to wear it to get the benefits of it. And then for the Vile Mask, it has a great debuff, which is increased by quite a bit if you run the Demolitionist Specialization. 
which is going to increase the damage of your concussion grenade, which is what the debuff of the Vile Mask is based off of, so it increases the damage of your Vile Mask debuff. Otherwise, you could also farm for the Punch Drunk Mask with 20% headshot damage baked into it, which is perfect for an all high-end headshot damage build, not the Aces and Eights ones, but I recommend farming Douglas and Hardy in Downtown East for that today. Now, last thing we got is really important. We got backpacks targeted loot at Manny National Zoo, so anyone that's looking for that Memento backpack with kill confirmed, I highly recommend farming Manny National zoo today i don't know if the memento backpack is black tusk it might be hunter but i as, as far as i know you know it might be black tusk so you could have an increased chance here at manning national zoo to get that memento backpack by only three percent though but i would recommend trying to farm Manny national zoo today for that memento and of course you can also get the acosta's go bag with one in the hand but you know that's up to you they're usually in hyena boxes as well and then of course Kenley College is open for another 4 days and 16 hours of this recording and the summit you pick your own target to lose. So let's now go check out what we got on the west and east sides of Washington DC agents. Alright agents, west side target loot highlights starting off with the gear sets. We got only a few over here and I negate, you know, tip of the spear. I don't even recommend it. We got a lot more on the east side, but really we only have Foundry Bulwark over here at Bank HQ today, which is a great, you know, set for a tank build. But remember that the chest and backpack are Iron Horse Raid exclusive. So what you want to do if you do not have them is of course join my discord and clan shadow crew on all platforms otherwise if you don't want to do that and find some groups to lfg with then you could use the emperor's guard knee pads with one percent armor region which you could farm for today in dz west and then use some bellstone armory as well which you could farm today at potomac event center mix those together and put armor region on everything don't put health on it health is a dead stat and that is going to be a great tank set as for normal target Alu, let's get started with one of the main highlights. We got Hana Yu at DCD HQ today. So of course you can find the Force Multiplier Backpack with Perfect Combined Arms. That's going to give you 30% skill damage, but it only lasts for 3 seconds as long as you're shooting every, you know, 3 seconds and landing that's hit. So in lieu of that, what you could do is farm over here at West End for Alps Summit and get the perfect tech support uh, talent on the Percussive Maintenance Backpack. But unfortunately, you know, it's on an Alps Summit Backpack. But you do get 30% skill damage, you know, for 30 seconds instead of 25% for 25 seconds. So it's up to you if you want to get that, you know. Otherwise, I'd highly recommend that Force Multiplier Backpack for sure and get it rolled with skill haste and skill damage. And then I also recommend Sokolov today at Title Basin Stronghold for new SMG users out there that are needing a, you know, extra piece, especially a chest or backpack that's rolled all red. And then next up, I'm going to mention Overlord at DARPA Research Labs. This is where you should farm the Fox's pair of knee pads. And then we got Empress at the Pentagon today. And I will put my favorite turret and drone build up right in the top right card now. And that, of course, is going to be three pieces of Empress, two piece Hana Yu, and the Waveform Holster, Kinetic Momentum on the chest piece, the Force Multiplier backpack. And of course, you want to run the Capacitor as your primary and the Harmony as your secondary weapon. Also, remember there's two named items in the light zone you can get from Empress that is Caesar's Guard chest piece with perfectly skilled and the battery pack are perfectly calculated neither of those are dark zone exclusive but of course what is dark zone exclusive is bellstone armory over here at potomac event center that liquid engineer backpack with perfect bloodsucker is a dark zone exclusive unfortunately so keep that in mind when you're farming bellstone armory but what you can farm for is the everyday carrier with perfectly efficient and please comment below if any of you guys out there use the uh, perfectly efficient everyday carrier chest piece because i never have and i don't think i ever will I also highly recommend Murakami and Foggy Bottom today if you're building a Memento turret and drone build. I think that it's better to have a piece of Murakami than an extra piece of Hanayu or more skill haze. And then of course we got rifles over here at the White House. So you got two exotics, the Merciless and the Diamondback. I hope you guys got your Merciless yesterday because it was over here at Jefferson Trade Center which is a great place to farm for it since it's its main source. Now the Merciless is great and all but it has a lot of recoil so you're going to need 3 piece striker or my personal favorite would be weapon handling or braced on the chest piece. Otherwise the Diamondback is pretty good as well. But the only problem with that is it only has 5 shots in its clip or magazine. Otherwise, it hits really hard in PvP and PvE. What I highly recommend though is the Baker's Dozen with Perfect Lucky Shot and the Surge with Perfect Spike. The Harmony with Perfect Sync is a Dark Zone exclusive unfortunately, but you know, those two are really good as well, especially the Surge. And then of course we got holsters at downtown west today so what i would recommend is the you know three exotics so you got the waveform which you get at season four level 90 and then you got the dodge city holster and the imperial dynasty holster 
You could farm for all three. The waveform's great for giving you a bunch of like 33% skill damage, you know, every 10 or 15 seconds, alternating between your left and right skills. The Dodge City's great for pistol builds or headshot damage builds. And then the Imperial Dynasty holster I always use on my close protocol build that I'm going to explain on the east side of DC. And then of course you could also farm for the Forge holster which gives you 50% shield health that is equivalent to an extra skill tier worth of shield health. And that's going to be all my recommendations for the west side. Let's go move on to the east side now, agents. Alright, agents, east side target loot highlights. Starting off with the gear sets, we got quite a bit, so let's get started already. So, strikers at east mall, I only ever recommend three pieces, never four. Just for rate of fire and weapon handling, like I was saying, with the merciless or with an LMG build. Next up, we got close protocol at American History Museum. Now, this is an amazing fire damage build that I'll put in the top title card right now and bottom left overlay. That, of course, is four pieces of Eclipse Protocol, the Imperial Dynasty holster, and one piece of Golong gear for an additional 10% status effects. You're going to run the Kim Launcher Firestarter and the Stinger Hive, the Pyromaniac if you want to, or the Harmony Rifle or Capacitor. And then, of course, the Firewall Specialization. Next up, we got Future Initiative at Viewpoint Museum. Remember, the chest and backpack are Iron Horse Raid exclusive, just like Foundry Bulwark. But you can also just get like an Alp Summit chest piece with Empathetic Resolve and a Murakami bag or a Richter and Kaiser or another Alp Summit with Safeguard on it and that is a really good non-raid exclusive healer build I highly recommend. And the last couple we got is my True Patriot build, or sorry, True Patriot at Judiciary Square. My True Patriot build will be in the top right card right now though, and that's four pieces of True Patriot, the Memento Backpack, and a Sokolov chest with Intimidate on it. I'm always going to run that with the Lady Death and the Mop with 10% armor on kill, or what you could do is switch it up and switch that Sokolov out for a Fenris chest piece with Intimidate and Rock the Chameleon, and both of those are really great for all content. Next up we got Negotiator's Dilemma at District Union Arena. So if I have enough cards, I'll put my double LMG build in the top right, but otherwise it's four pieces of Negotiator's Dilemma and the Coyote's Mask. And then of course one pair of Grupo Sombro Gloves if you're going to be running ARs or SMGs, or even LMGs as well if you want that extra crit hit damage, or the Contractor's Gloves, and then you can run the Pestilence and the Bullet, or the Bullet King. And then lastly, we got Ongoing Directive at Grand Washington Hotel. I always give you guys my favorite two bleed damage builds. So first one's going to be Ridgeway's Pride, Four Piece Ongoing Directive, and the Anarchist Cookbook with Perfect Wicked. And I always run both of these with the Carnage with Perfect Sadist, which you can get at DZ East Vendor this week, and then also the Scorpio, the Exotic Shotgun with Septic Shock. The other one is going to be running the Vile Mass, four piece of ongoing directive, and then a Badger Tough backpack with Creeping Death. The Eclipse Protocol backpack no longer works alone. That's why you got to use the Anarchist Cookbook or the you know Badger Tough backpack. And speaking of Badger Tough and regular target loot out of gear sets, we got Badger Tough at Southwest area, so you could farm the Zero F's chest piece with Perfect Unbreakable, which is really great for all DPS hybrid builds, and you can actually buy one at the White House vendor this week. Now what that's going to do is repair 100% of your armor um, every 55 seconds, or sorry, the, the cooldown's 55 seconds. When your armor breaks, you know, you get all of it back, and then the cooldown's 55 seconds. Next up, shotguns at a Space Administration HQ. So you got the Sweet Dreams with the Sandman Talent and the Scorpio with Septic Shock as the two exotic shotguns in this game. With the Sweet Dreams, it's usually good on skill builds, so you can melee one hit kill any red or purple barred enemy, and it's only got a 15 second cooldown. For the Scorpio, it's good for DPS, tank, skill, any type of build. Because you could stun lock enemies, you know, one shot is uh, poison, three confuse, five is shock, and then seven is a 20% damage debuff to you and your allies as well against that enemy. It's incredible, and I think it overshadows the Sweet Dreams by a lot. Otherwise, the other best four shotguns in this game I'd recommend is the rock and roll is perfectly extra but that's a dz exclusive and then the mop with 10 percent armor on kill the custom m870 and the marine super 90 with close and personal rolled on all of them and then i'd also recommend for anyone looking for a piece of grupo sombra like you can run this on legendary today i know capital building is kind of a pain but you'll you know you, if you get the right group it's not at all and remember one piece for dps builds for that 15 percent credit damage where you're going to get it all reds now, if you're going to be going for an explosive skill damage build, then you're going to need two pieces of Grupo Sumbro and both of them all yellows with like skill haste or skill duration and skill damage on them. 
And then the last like three we got is assault rifles at Federal Triangle. So you got two exotic assault rifles in this game that aren't the Eagle Bearer, and that's the Chameleon with Adaptive Instincts, and of course the Capacitor with Capacitance. Now remember, for the Capacitor, you need to complete five summit challenges, and they can be done on any difficulty, and exotics do not, their roles do not, you know, matter. They don't depend on the difficulty. They depend, um, the drop rate chance is what depends on the difficulty. And then you could farm it afterwards or someone can share it with you. Otherwise, the Chameleon with Adaptive Instincts is highly worth it especially on like a you know true patriot build like i was mentioning and then there's a bunch of named ars in the bottom left overlay the rail splitter is a dark zone exclusive unfortunately but the rest of them you can farm for i recommend the burnout the mechanical animal and probably the you know new test subject and the last two we got is chess pieces at Jefferson Trade Center. So the Tardigrade and the Ridgeways Pride are the two exotic chess pieces in this game. The Tardigrade, you could just straight up farm for. The Ridgeways Pride, you're going to need to let your teammates know what you're farming for and what they're farming for so they can share it with you if they already have it in their blue pool. Otherwise, you'll have to complete the project for Ridgeways Pride. And of course, you could farm this for the Sacrifice of Perfect Glass Cannon or, you know, any named chess piece, but you usually want to farm the brand over the type, you know, it, it yields way better results and, and it decreases the large amount of options that can come from all the named chess pieces in this game. And lastly, the Douglas and Harding I already mentioned for the Punch Drunk, so let's go check out now what we got in New York City, guys. Alright agents, New York City target Alu highlights and the only gear set we got is hardwired over here. So now you got a hardwired build that a subscriber showed me to another channel and I'll give it to you guys one last time before I put it together and try it out myself. Now that of course is four pieces of uh, hardwired and then you want a china light piece with glass cannon or unbreakable and then the vial mask and you want to run the jammer pulse and the firefly or you can run the bulwark shield to get your skill cooldowns like up and down really fast I guess either way though that is not my build you know it's uh, running butchers and I you know have to figure out what's going on with that build I want to try it out myself as for regular target loot I highly recommend farming Golong gear at the tombs today if you need that anarchist cookbook with perfect wicked which is going to give you 18% weapon damage for an entire 27 seconds after you apply a status effect so that's why it's so great on that ongoing directive build and then next up, Walker Harrison Co. at Civic Center, you can farm that chain killer chest piece of Perfect Headhunter that's going to deal 150% of your last killing blow, which is a lot. You know, with the Mantis, which you could farm for over here at Wall Street today, you can get 20 million a headshot. And like I said about the Mantis, you can farm it here at Wall Street today, or you could farm the Nemesis if you've already gotten it. Otherwise, let your teammates know what you're farming for so they can share it with you so you can skip the project. And the only other thing I recommend today is these two right here, light machine guns and submachine guns. You know, LMGs at two bridges, you got two exotics, the Bullet King and the Pestilence. I recommend both of them. The Bullet King is great because you never have to reload it, but has a lower base damage. The Pestilence, you have to reload and it's got like a six second reload, but the damage tick, you can get to over a million if you spec into weapon damage. It is not a status effect. But of course, you can run Braced or Weapon Handling and get, I've gotten that Pestilence down to like a two second reload. Otherwise, there's a bunch of named LMGs is in the bottom left overlay the black friday with perfect unhinged is a dark zone exclusive the rest of them are not and they're worth farming for for sure especially the carnage the good times and the new reliable and last but not least submachine guns at stranded tanker it sucks that it's not in the open world today but you got three exotics right you got the lady death which you could just straight up farm for you got the chatterbox if i have enough cards or if i don't i'll put in the uh, pinned comment below with my chatterbox guide video it's like five minutes long it's super easy to follow and the other one's the backfire and that you're going to need about 94% hazard protection to stop the bleed or skip the reload animation, but that also could deplete your stacks of crit hit damage. And always remember that the Dark Winter and the Apartment are Dark Zone exclusives. They are not something you could farm for outside of the DZ other than like, you know, farming for named caches or something like that because they can drop from named caches and other random sources like that. And then, of course, the two SMGs I recommend farming for in the light zone is the Grudge with Perfect Vindictive, and then, of course, the Safety Distance with Perfect Outsider. Both of those are really good. The Safety Distance is great for an all-red DPS build that you can just nuke people from, you know, really far away. And the Grudge with Perfect Vindictive, I, if I remember, if I recall right, it goes really great on the ongoing directive bleed damage builds as well, because it's all about status effects with that Vindictive, but I, I think I might be getting that wrong. Either way, it is pretty good, though. 
Alright agents, well that was your daily farming guide for today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please consider pressing the subscribe and like buttons below. It really helps me out a lot, and you as well if you enjoyed the content, and if you didn't, just give it a thumbs down. Always remember to check the video description and pinned comment below for links to support my channel, Shadow Gaming Merch Store, my Discord, my Shadow Crew Clan on all platforms, gear and weapon spreadsheets, and the weekly vendor reset website. If you'd like to become a member, you can click the join button below for exclusive perks and of course it just supports me i really appreciate and shout out and thank you to all five of my channel members it really helps me out you know with the monetary situation and adsense revenue otherwise be sure to stay tuned for more daily division 2 content this is asian shadow signing off i will see you in the next video take care agents and have a lovely week